North Korean leader Kim tours weapons factories and vows to boost war readiness in face of tensions. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un conducted a three-day tour of the country's key weapons factories, inspecting facilities producing artillery systems and launch vehicles for nuclear-capable ballistic missiles. Kim emphasized the importance of advancing the military's arms and war readiness. This tour took place as tensions between North Korea and the US and South Korea are escalating due to missile tests and joint military exercises. The visit to the weapons factories could also be related to potential military cooperation with Russia amid the Ukraine conflict. Kim's comments during the visit suggest an intention to modernize domestically produced weapons and explore possibilities for exporting artillery and other supplies to Russia. This tour follows a recent military parade where Kim showcased powerful missiles designed to target South Korea and the US. Kim's attempts to strengthen partnerships with Moscow and Beijing are seen as efforts to counter diplomatic isolation and align against the United States. Philippine military condemns Chinese Coast Guard's use of water cannon on its boat in disputed sea. The Philippine military has condemned the Chinese Coast Guard's use of a water cannon to block a Filipino supply boat from delivering troops, food, water, and fuel to a Philippine-occupied shoal in the disputed South China Sea. The incident occurred at the Second Thomas Shoal, a source of territorial conflicts involving China, the Philippines, and other nations. The Chinese ship's action violated international law and the 1982 UN Convention on the Law of the Sea. The U.S. expressed support for the Philippines and warned that it would defend its ally in case of armed attack. Australia and Japan also voiced concern about China's actions. The incident is part of ongoing tensions in the South China Sea due to competing territorial claims. North Korea's Kim Jong-un orders increase in arms factory capacity for war readiness, state media reports. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has visited weapons factories and called for an increase in the country's arsenal capacity and readiness for war. During his tour, Kim visited facilities producing artillery systems, launch pads for nuclear-capable ballistic missiles, and engines for cruise missiles and drones. He praised workers' efforts to improve the quality of shells and urged the development of new types of ammunition. Kim's inspection coincided with rising tensions on the Korean Peninsula due to North Korea's missile tests and joint U.S.-South Korea military exercises. Experts suggest his publicized factory visits may signal military cooperation with Russia and a boost for domestic weapon manufacturing morale. Italy cuts troops in Niger to free up military base space for civilians. Italy has reduced its troop presence in Niger to accommodate civilians who may require protection due to the unstable security situation. This move comes as West Africa's ECOWAS threatens military intervention in Niger if the recent military coup is not reversed. The Italian Defense Ministry explained that an airlift transported 65 Italian soldiers and 10 US soldiers from Niger to Rome. This action aims to optimize the Italian military base's accommodation capacity for civilians and potential emergency evacuations. The evacuation of Italian citizens from Niger began last week, and currently, around 250 Italian troops remain in the country, engaged in counterinsurgency and military training missions. Italy is one of several Western nations, including the US and France, with a military presence in Niger, supporting efforts against Islamist insurgencies in the Sahel region. Slovak President permits nine citizens to enlist in Ukrainian military. Slovak President Zuzana Chaputova has approved nine Slovak citizens to join the Ukrainian army. From February 24, 2022, to August 2, 2023, the president issued 35 decrees related to military service, with nine allowing Slovak citizens to serve in the Ukrainian armed forces. Slovak law requires presidential authorization for foreign military service, and applications are reviewed by various ministries. The decision comes as Ukraine receives support from Slovakia in terms of defense, including missile defense systems and aircraft. Palestinian gunman kills Israeli, shot dead in Tel Aviv. A Palestinian gunman killed an Israeli municipal officer in Tel Aviv and was later shot dead by another officer in response. The attack occurred amid increased violence in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and followed a separate incident where a Palestinian was killed by Israeli settlers in the West Bank. The gunman opened fire on a municipal inspector in Tel Aviv city center, who died from his injuries. The attacker, identified as Kamal Abu Bahar, was also killed. The Israeli Domestic Security Service identified him as an Islamic Jihad sympathizer. There was no immediate claim of responsibility, 
but Hamas referred to the attack as a response to perceived Israeli actions. This event reflects the ongoing tensions and violence in the region, with the conflict having resulted in casualties on both sides this year. Japan condemns Russia nuclear threat on Hiroshima anniversary. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida criticized Russia's nuclear threats on the 78th anniversary of the atomic bombing of Hiroshima. Around 140,000 people died in Hiroshima and 74,000 in Nagasaki when the U.S. dropped atomic bombs on the cities in 1945. Kishida, speaking at the Hiroshima ceremony, emphasized Japan's commitment to a nuclear-free world and urged global unity toward this goal. He highlighted the difficulties due to international divisions over disarmament and Russia's nuclear threat. UN Chief Antonio Guterres echoed these sentiments, condemning any use of nuclear weapons. Despite efforts for disarmament, concerns persist due to Russia's threats, North Korea's missile tests, and limited nonproliferation progress. German far-right says the EU is a failed project as it prepares for European Parliament elections. Germany's far-right alternative for Germany, AFD, party declared the European Union, EU, a failed project in its current form during its party convention. The party's adopted program for the upcoming European Parliament election criticizes the EU's failures in areas such as migration and climate policy, and rejects the euro as a currency. However, the AFD stopped short of calling for Germany's exit from the EU, instead proposing the refoundation of the EU as a federation of European nations. The party's program focuses on protecting external borders, security policy autonomy, and preserving diverse identities in Europe. Recent polls indicate the AFD's support at 19 to 22 percent, making it a significant opposition force. The party's stance towards the EU has softened from a previous draft that sought the orderly dissolution of the EU. China invites top EU diplomat for visit after July postponement. China's foreign minister Wang Yi has extended an invitation to the European Union's top diplomat, Josep Borrell, and his delegation for a visit in the fall, after a previously scheduled trip was postponed. The visit aims to facilitate preparations ahead of a leaders summit later in the year. This announcement came after a phone call between Wang and Burrell, during which they also discussed regional matters such as Ukraine and Niger. Burrell was initially scheduled to visit Beijing last month but the trip was delayed. Hiroshima marks 78th anniversary of atomic bombing. Hiroshima officials have criticized the increasing support for nuclear weapons as a deterrent, which has grown due to concerns over Russia's actions in Ukraine and tensions in the Korean Peninsula. The criticism was voiced during the commemoration of the 78th anniversary of the atomic bombing. The mayor of Hiroshima rejected the notion of nuclear deterrence theory and urged global leaders to take concrete steps toward nuclear disarmament. Hiroshima's governor also questioned the push for reinforced nuclear deterrence and stated that it hampers progress towards disarmament. The commemoration came after a G7 summit that addressed non-use of nuclear weapons but also justified their presence for defensive purposes. The atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945 killed hundreds of thousands of people and ended World War II. Japan's Prime Minister, who represents Hiroshima, has been criticized for not signing the treaty on the prohibition of nuclear weapons, despite advocating for disarmament. He highlighted the challenges to nuclear disarmament due to rising tensions but emphasized the importance of regaining momentum toward a nuclear-free world. The ceremony included a moment of silence and the release of doves as symbols of peace.